Hey, it's Matt from Custom Car Grills here with a plastic mesh install for the 2008 through 12 Ford Escape. In this video, I'll show you how I made the grill shown here, and it all starts with the stock grill removed from the bumper. Once you have it to this point, then we can flip the grill around and disassemble it. There's two pieces to the stock grill, and I'll use a flathead screwdriver to separate out the black plastic support that has the bars on it. Look for a few of these around the perimeter, and once they're all dislodged, then the two parts can be separated. On the front part of the grill, we can now see that there's a gap that will be a problem, and we need to come up with a strategy to bridge this area. I'll start by using a scrap piece of mesh to fill in the area and hold it in place with some tape for now. Next up, I'll grab some repair material to bond the sections together. I like using Plyo Grip Plastic Repair number 3, though other two-part epoxies can work. Just dispense some of the epoxy into the area and onto the mesh. Oh, and by the way, something like a drywall repair tape could work as a simple one-stage solution if scrap mesh and solid tape is not available. Let's allow that to cure for a while and work on the other grill half for a moment with a Dremel, equipped with our number 543 cutting and shaping wheel. We'll be making a few big cuts on the perimeter around these regions so that the center bars are removed, but we keep the portion of the outer frame. Okay, let's get started on this. And while there's not a specific distance I can pinpoint on where to cut, the best I can say is that you want to get the cut close to the front edge like what I'm showing here. When it comes to the left and right sides, you'll want to cut the front edge, but have it near the edge where it bends inward. Then there's a small connecting cut that blurs the line and cut depth between the two sections. Once all the cuts are made, then the center section can be removed and thrown away, and we're left with just an outer frame that we'll need later on. There will be some burnt on plastic bits from the cutting, and most of those can be picked off by hand, but any stubborn ones may need some sanding. By now, the plyo grip should be cured, so let's take the tape off and add some more to the back of it to fully bond this section together. So, here goes round two with a moderate amount dispensed out, and before it starts to harden up, I'll go over it with a Bondo spreader to even it out. It's also time to fill in near the edge some of the hollow vertical bars. When we're done, the idea is to have a solid edge to work on when the center is cut out instead of having more of these holes to fill in. Speaking of that cutting, once the plyo grip is cured, then I'll make the initial cuts on the small bars using an open-ended saw blade. Then, once all those cuts are made, I'll move on to the big horizontal bar. It's a good idea to get this cut close to the edge, but I don't want to cut in so close that I'm digging into the area too far outside of the main bar area. Depending on how far the repair material is built up behind the bar, this might take a while to cut through. Just work your way through the bar on both sides, and now the center portion can be removed and thrown away. There's going to be a noticeable bump where that horizontal bar was, and using a grinder with an aggressive grit sanding disc will knock down most of it quickly. The one I'm using here is 36 grit, and it's important to stay in the target area and not grind down too far during this step. In an effort to preserve the body line of the beveled edge, I'll use some tape as stop marks as to where not to sand past. This is a very simple yet effective way of keeping everything in line. Using a band file, I'll now sand down the beveled edge to be flat with the surrounding beveled edge. Again, don't go overboard with the sanding quite yet unless you're 100% sure on its flatness. Then I taped off the back of these areas that needed repair with some aluminum tape. This will catch any excess and prevent dripping anywhere. Just a little extra plyo grip is being dispensed onto the area, and I'm again using a spreader to help even it all out. Ideally, this will be the last time we need to add more of the plyo grip for these edges, so make sure to get good coverage. And after you have some laid down, then use the spreader to even out the coverage to create a more consistent depth. Then, once the plyo grip is cured, the aluminum tape can be pulled off and discarded. Now I've got out a sanding block and started to work on the top and bottom edges to straighten and smoothen them out. There's some 180 grit paper on the block and this is coarse enough to make some meaningful progress on the sanding while not digging in too deep. If a sanding block isn't available then a drywall sander or a flat piece of wood with sandpaper wrapped around it can still work. 
With any overhang that you see, use some tape to draw a line from each end of the factory edge and across the center section like so. Then just simply use the Dremel with the attachment from before and cut right behind the line. This should result in a nice, clean, and consistent line that hopefully we won't need to reshape again. In regard to sanding down the repair material on the sides, I'm again using a band file, which works great. I'm using a coarse grit belt to work down the excess quickly, though it's important to leave a little height left so that we don't need to refill this yet again. Quick and consistent passes over the area will usually get good results. Once the bulk of it is sanded down, then I'll come back and refine it with a dual action sander. This can be done by hand or with sanding blocks, but having access to a proper sander will be a huge time saver if you have one available. I had a few pinholes from small air pockets in my edge after some sanding, so I'll come back with some finishing putty to fill them in. Just add a little bit of hardener, mix it up, pack it in the holes, and then add a little thin and even layer to the surrounding area. This will harden up quickly, and once afterward, I'll get my sanding block out again and work it smooth all the way down to a 320 grit paper before I call it good. Getting this step right is important because any imperfections from here on out will show up on the finished grill. Oh, and I actually forgot a couple tabs that needed to be cut. There's a couple on the inner top edge that need to be cut off flush like what I'm showing here. Okay, this should now be all the cutting and sanded needed for this grill frame, so let's get it painted up. The first thing to do is to grab some primer. I like the Spray Max 1K Primer Filler. This goes on smooth and dries quickly. Then, to bring it back to life, I'll use the Spray Max 1K Trim Paint in matte black. This will end up having a very OEM-like finish that hides any small sanding marks as well. Once it's painted up, then let's flip it face down and get the other half that was cut up earlier back into the picture. This should snap back into place in all the same spots that it was previously connected to. And if this doesn't snap back in properly, take a look at the areas that were repaired and see if anything needs to be trimmed back. To bond the two parts of the grill together, you can run a bead of plyo grip on the edge where the two parts meet up. Then run a brush over the area to spread it out further and even out the application. Doing this will strengthen the installation so the grill holds together and make it ready for the mesh installation. And speaking of which, let's take a look at the mesh piece that we have for sale on our website. This is pre-cut specifically for the 2008 through 12 Ford Escape with all the right cuts already made in it so that it fits right in after you've modified your grill frame. Attaching the mesh to the frame is going to require some mounting bases and included in the kit will be 24 bases and ties. I'll place some of these around the perimeter of the back of the grill, spacing them out a few inches apart on the top and bottom edges and a couple inches apart on the left and right sides. There's going to be some bumps as well as some clips in the way for some spots, and those should be avoided. Essentially, just put these where you can while keeping them close to the inside edge. The top edge is a tight fit, and it's normal if you need to slide them down at an angle. While these do have an adhesive back to them, you don't want to depend on that to hold them in place long term. To permanently affix these bases to the back of the grill, I'll get the epoxy back out again and dispense some around the perimeter of the bases. Now it's important not to spill any of this into the center of the base. There's some small slots that we're going to need to use to feed some ties through. Just like in previous steps, I like to use a brush to get the coverage evened out for a better grip, and be careful not to spill any of this in an area that you don't want it to go to. Let this cure, and afterward, let's now start feeding the ties through. And you can see why it's important now to not clog up those holes in the bases. On the bottom and side edges, I'll run them vertically, top to bottom. Whereas with the top edge, it's much tighter, and these ties can run horizontally, left to right. Then, let's line up the mesh piece on the back of the grill, like so. Make sure to have this lined up where you want it to be, and have it straight and level. I like using a silver marker to draw a little line or a circle on the solid part of the diamond that comes closest to the corresponding mounting base below it. This will take the guesswork out of where to loop the ties around the mesh once we get started on sliding them into position. For this bottom edge, I marked the position for the ties to go on the second to last row, 
And in this close-up, you can see how using a marker makes this look easy. And that's because I already know where I need to feed the ties around, and now it's just a matter of actually doing it. For this initial looping of the ties, you'll want to feed the tail end through the head, but don't tighten them any further than what you see here. Continue with this until the whole perimeter is loosely tied on. Please note that on the sides, there's a bigger loop than just one diamond. And once you're happy with the positioning of the mesh, then start tightening down the ties. It's best to not go overboard with the tightening of these. We want the mesh to be on the back of the grill tight, but if you over tighten the ties, then the mesh will start to bow or warp. Once the ties are at the right tension, the mesh shouldn't move around, but it also shouldn't be distorted. All of mine are now set to my liking, so I'll come back and trim off the tail ends of the ties. This grill is complete and ready for installation. Let's flip it around and see how it turned out. Oh wow, check this out. What a transformation this grill has gone through. Let's see how this looks installed on the Escape. Here's some installed pictures that were sent in. This honestly hardly looks like an Escape at all now. The grill really transforms the front end of this vehicle. Now, the owner of this grill reported back that some small modifications to the bumper were needed for reinstallation. Watch this transition of what was cut out of the bumper. In addition to this, these vertical rubber strips on the left and right side of the radiator need to be trimmed back a little, otherwise they'll prematurely hit the back of the grill. The whole mod is complete at this point, and what a rewarding build this was to do. Not only was it great to make the grill, but the owner that I made this for is one of our biggest fans on YouTube. The user that goes by Rezo has consistently been commenting and liking our videos for years, and it was great to connect with him and have the opportunity to make this grill. If you've been following me for a long time, feel free to email me at info at customcargrills.com with your grill idea, and let's see if I can bring it to life. Well, that's all I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have any questions, then feel free to contact me, and thanks for watching.